Hi everyone, Dominic from Punkfish Diving here, and I'd like to talk a bit about gradient factor low and, and answer the question if the precise value of gradient factor low that you set in your dive computer, if that changes the no decompression limit that your computer will display. And for all practical purposes, the answer is um, the no decompression limit, it's governed by the setting of gradient factor high not of gradient factor low. And that's actually easy to understand if we remember what the definition of a no decompression dive actually is. The definition is that at any given point during the dive, while still, still inside the no decompression limit, you could decide to end the dive and ascend in a controlled fashion, of course not arbitrarily fast, but in a controlled fashion, ascend directly to the surface. And then your supersaturation when reaching the surface would still be acceptable, so there would be no mandatory stop to get rid of inert gas beforehand. That mandatory stop would of course mean that you are already in a mandatory decompression dive. Now, of course, also for this no decompression dives, you know that there is the recommendation of doing a safety stop, but from the viewpoint of the model, that's not yet a mandatory decompression stop. And now we already have the puzzle pieces in a way in our hand. That of course means that gradient factor high, that's the value that will govern how much no decompression time left your computer will display for you because gradient factor high, that's the value that governs how much supersaturation is allowed at the moment of reaching the surface. And only if you should go beyond the no decompression limit and accumulate more and more mandatory decompression obligation, then gradually the setting of gradient factor low would limit how far you can ascend before doing your first decompression stop. So a low setting of gradient factor low would then mean your first decompression stop takes place already at a deeper depth compared to a higher value. So, but as, as long as you stay inside the no decompression limit, the setting of gradient factor high will be the one that will basically govern how much no decompression time you get displayed in your computer. Now that's all fine and nice, of course, but that still means we have to punch in a concrete value for gradient factor low also in most dive computers, right? And so what can we do? Actually, first thing I would recommend is of course to learn about gradient factors as you are doing, you are watching these videos here, reading maybe the article by Andy Davis. The second thing is take an informed decision based on this learning of what will be the value of gradient factor high that you want to use. Because this in a way is a very, very important decision regarding the overall margin of safety you will want to have in your diving. And say you decide for a value of gradient factor high for say 70. And then at least shearwater dive computers, my Perdix here for example, at least in those, the set the value of gradient factor low can at most be as high as the value as of gradient factor high. It can't be higher. So at this point you already know that at most you could punch in 70. But I would actually recommend to not simply do that but to actually also for no decompression dives use a value of gradient factor low that you would feel comfortable with if there was a real decompression obligation. That's a, just, a, just, a, just a good habit to go into and maybe a good preparation for also like taking a step inside technical diving in the future. So what I'd probably do is if you have maybe decided to go for a gradient factor high of 70, I would just put, punch in a gradient factor low of maybe 40 or 50 or so. Yeah? And then you would have a set of values and you could then go for a hopefully safe and fun dive. Thank you and have a nice day.